let's just jump into this. What you know, what we're learning as a result of this January 6th committee and the work that they're doing about actually what happened. First of all, uh, we've got this PowerPoint presentation, you know, how to commit treason, how to overthrow a country, how to, how to stage a coup. Another member of Congress, by the way, this, this morning, uh, he kind of stumbled around it, but he was saying something, there's an old saying about coups and uh, if, uh, an unsuccessful coup. And what he was trying to say was, what do they call an unsuccessful coup? Practice. That was what he was trying to say. I was listening to it going, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyhow, there's this 38-page PowerPoint out there that came out, uh, came out of the committee this, this week, I believe, or maybe late last week, as a result of, um, in fact, it was late last week, as a result of Mark Meadows turning over a bunch of, uh, some 8,000 documents to the January 6th Treason Committee. And it... It is being characterized, and, and Judd Legum did a really great job of this over at popular.info this morning. It's being characterized by multiple news sources, you know, on mainstream uh, corporate media, as wild and crazy. I mean, literally using those words. Uh, extreme. Um, uh, doubting whether it was even seriously considered. Well, here are the, the uh, five bullet points that were at the top of this, of this uh, uh, PowerPoint. Number one, brief senators and congressmen on foreign interference. Number two, declare national security emergency. Number three, uh, foreign influence and control of electronic voting systems. Number four, declare electronic voting in all states invalid. And number five, legal and genuine paper ballots are constitutional remedy delegated to Congress. In other words, throw the election to the House of Representatives and let the Republicans uh, choose Trump as the president. So let's just go through those five things, because this is what was in the PowerPoint presentation that the media would have you think was just some wild thing that somebody cooked up and nobody was taking serious in the White House. So the first point was declare a Nash, or excuse me, the first point was brief senators and congressmen on foreign interference. That actually happened. Congressman Waldron told the Washington Post that he briefed Ron Johnson, Senator, you know, Senator Ron Johnson from Wisconsin and Senator Lindsey Graham from South Carolina and other members of Congress who he refused to identify on the fact, on the possibility, <laughs> the fact, on, on the uh, President, uh, on President Trump's belief that foreign governments had meddled in our elections. Isn't this ironic in 2020? He's saying this after what happened in 2016. Anyhow, the foreign governments had meddled in our election and therefore... Uh, the Biden victory should be considered illegitimate. So that actually happened, the first thing in the PowerPoint presentation. They actually did the briefing. The second point in the PowerPoint presentation, the, the, the Mark Meadows treason PowerPoint, declare national security emergency. Well, Trump never actually pulled the plug or the switch on a national security emergency. He really didn't have an opportunity to. The time to do that would have been if Mike Pence stood up and said, I am rejecting the Electoral College ballots from Pennsylvania, Arizona, Michigan, Wisconsin. You know, if he, if he just listed a half a, half a dozen states, the, the so-called swing states, and Georgia, and said, uh, I'm rejecting these ballots because of voter fraud, and I am going to throw the election into the House of Representatives where there are 30 congressional delegations controlled by Republicans out of, out of the 50, and uh, surprise, surprise, the election would have been given to Trump. Which is, as I've been pointing out since I published a piece about this in March a year ago, almost two years ago, in March of 2020, I laid out, this is exactly what happened in, eight, not exactly, very close to what happened in 1876 in that Tilden Hayes election, where Tilden got the majority of the popular vote, and Tilden got the majority of the Electoral College vote, but because there were four states who submitted dueling slates of electors, they, they, selected, they submitted electors for both Tilden and Hayes because they were messing with the election. These were states that were controlled, in the, the three southern states were still controlled by Confederates, by and large. Uh, the Union Army was there, but they were unhappy about it. And the fourth state was Oregon, which was controlled by the Ku Klux Klan which was sympathetic to the Confederacy, so we say. And, you know, as I point out, this is, so that would have been the point. 
when Mike Pence gets up there and says, I'm throwing this to the House of Representatives, that would have been the point at which the president would have declared a national emergency and mobilized the National Guard all across the United States and said, okay, if people pour out into the streets, we're going to start shooting them. Now, he clearly was setting this up. Keep in mind, this is point number two on the PowerPoint presentation. He said, this is, uh, you know, this, this is his January 6th speech. We won. We won in a landslide. That was a landslide. They say it's not American to challenge an election. This is the most corrupt election in history, maybe in the world. In fact, it's so egregious, it's so bad that a lot of people don't even believe it. It's so crazy they don't believe it. This is not just a matter of domestic politics. This is a matter of, of national security, said Trump. He's tweaking this. He's getting it ready, right? He's laying the groundwork. He had similarly called on the governor of Georgia in a tweet saying, why won't Governor Brian Kemp of Georgia, the hapless governor of Georgia, use his emergency powers, which can be easily done to overrule his obstinate secretary of state, blah de blah Use your emergency powers. Declare a state of emergency. That was number two on the PowerPoint presentation. He was clearly getting that ready. Number three on the PowerPoint presentation, foreign influence and control of electronic voting systems. On November 29th, 2020, on Fox Business, Trump said, quote, Votes recorded on Dominion voting machines are counted in foreign countries. He repeated that same claim, Judd Legum writes over at Popular.info, on December 2nd, 2020. On December 22nd, Trump promoted a tweet on his uh, Twitter feed encouraging Pence to reject the electors certified by the Electoral College because of China, Russia, and Iran. So it's all right there, right? This is, this is point number three. Point number four on the PowerPoint. Declare electronic voting in all states invalid, genuine, and legal paper ballots. In a speech to our troops, for God's sake, on November 26, 2020, Thanksgiving, Donald Trump said to the troops, quote, those machines are fixed. They're rigged. You can press Trump and the vote goes to Biden. All they have to do is play with a chip, and it's shown all the time. All you have to do is play with a chip, and they play with a chip, especially in Wayne County and Detroit. In Philadelphia, you take a look. So he's following the PowerPoint to a T here, perfectly. On December 2nd, 2020, he said, its name is Dominion with a turn of a dial. With a change of a chip, you can press a button for Trump, and the vote goes to Biden. That was in a national speech. And then, of course, the other key slide in the PowerPoint presentation was options for January 6th. Vice President Pence seats Republican electors over the objections of Democrats in the states where the fraud occurred, number one. Number two, Vice President Pence rejects the electors from states where fraud occurred, causing the election to be decided by remaining electoral votes. And number three, Vice President Pence delays the decision in order to allow for a vetting and subsequent counting of all the legal paper ballots. This is where Pence blew it up. And Trump knew this was coming and he was trying to stop it. This is what he said in his January 6th speech. Again, perfectly following the script of the PowerPoint, the treason PowerPoint, how to do a coup presentation that Mark Meadows turned over to Congress. This is from January 6th Trump's speech. Quote, because if Mike Pence does the right thing, we win the election. All he has to do. This is the, from the number one, or certainly one of the top constitutional lawyers in our country. He has the absolute right to do it. I just spoke to Mike. I said, Mike, that doesn't take courage. What takes courage is to do nothing. That takes courage. In other words, to refuse to count the ballots, the Electoral College ballots. And then Trump goes on to say, and then we're stuck with a president who lost the election by a lot. We have to live for that, with that for four more years. We're just not going to let that happen. In other words, Trump is saying to his assembled mob, we've got to stop Mike Pence. Did you guys bring the gallows? Well, it turns out they did. Are you going to go hang Mike Pence? I mean, he didn't literally say these things, but this, this is the essence of it. Are you going to go hang Mike Pence? Oh, yeah, sure. We're on, we're on our way. And sure enough, they did. And I'm telling you, it gets even weirder than that. So we're, we're finding sort of what's happened in the White House. This is the big thing that they want Meadows to test. So what, was the, what was Trump doing? What was Trump saying for this three, three plus hours that the, that the Capitol was under assault? We know what happened in the Capitol building. That's pretty clear. 
What we don't know has happened is what happened in the Pentagon. Why was the National Guard delayed? And I'll get to that right after the break. I mean, this is just bizarre, but it is becoming quite clear that this was, as, as a member of Congress said this morning, my apologies for not remembering his name, uh, this, oh, Ed Perlmutter, he said it's treason. Okay, so we've laid out, number one, that Trump was following this PowerPoint to a T. So what else was going on at that time? Well, this report that just came out of the January 6th committee, uh, this came out last, uh, I believe it was Saturday or Sunday, um, says, quote, Mr. Meadows reportedly spoke with Kashep Patel, this is Kash Patel, who was then the chief of staff to former acting secretary of defense Christopher Miller, quote, nonstop, end quote, throughout the day of January 6th. And among other things, Mr. Meadow, Meadows apparently knows if and when Mr. Trump was engaged in discussions regarding the National Guard's response to the Capitol riot. Now this is the, you know, the first part of this is how, how Trump tried to gin up and, and freak out his, his followers so that they would go try to hang Mike Pence and, and assassinate Nancy Pelosi and, and steal the election. And then he would declare a state of emergency. So we've got all that. But what was the Pentagon doing at this time? Well, it, it, this is the, the chief of staff to the Secretary of Defense. So the Secretary of Defense runs the Pentagon. The chief of staff is, is his gatekeeper. And he was talking to, to Mark Meadows, the gatekeeper for Donald Trump, continuously through January 6th. Cash Patel was the gatekeeper for Chris Miller, the Secretary of Defense. Chris Miller, who on January 4th wrote a letter to the D.C. National Guard saying that Without my subsequent personal authorization, the D.C. National Guard is not authorized to be issued weapons, ammunition, bay bayonets, helmets, or ballistic protection equipment, is not authorized to interact physically with protesters, is not authorized to employ any riot control agents, in other words, no tear gas, is not authorized to share equipment with law enforcement agencies, in other words, the Capitol Police, is not authorized to use intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance assets is not authorized to employ helicopters or other air assets, is not authorized to conduct searches, seizures, arrests, or other similar direct law enforcement activity, and is not authorized to seek support from any non-DC National Guard units in the country. This is, you'll recall, the governor of Maryland was desperately trying to get the Maryland National Guard to the Capitol. They were only five miles away. And the, and the Defense Department said no. Now this is the area that we're just scratching the surface of. We do not yet know what was going on in the Pentagon. We do know that Michael Flynn's brother was on one of these phone calls where they were saying, no, we're not gonna send in the DC National Guard. And his brother is now a general in charge of the Pacific Fleet. I wanna know what the hell is going on here. The National Guard says they were held back by the army leaders.